What's up my friends, welcome back! For this example I have a light bulb, a 220 volts AC supply, an Arduino, the breadboard and a Bluetooth connection and I can dim the brightness of the light bulb with my smartphone. Pretty cool right? So, first of all, this project is a bit dangerous, since I'll be using mains power from my home, which here in Spain is 220 volts AC, which could injure you in a fraction of a second. So, if you're not sure about anything, don't try this project. If you're not using proper tools, if you don't check and double check each connection and never never touch the wires where the power is connected, well, don't try this project, just sit back and learn. Anyway, today we're gonna build an AC voltage power control that could also be controlled with our smartphone via the Bluetooth connection. If you have an AC voltage transformer, you could set it to 9 volts peak to peak and by that make sure that you never get hurt. I don't have one so I'll have to use 220 volts for my main supply, so I'll have to be very careful. I will only connect supply when everything works perfect and I'll do that using this power switch. So guys, let's see the components that we are going to use today build a circuit, how to control power, add the Bluetooth connection and use our smartphone to dim the light of our room. So let's get started! This project is brought to you by JLC PCB, which is a manufacturer of quick PCB prototypes for more than 10 years and is the site that I use for all of my PCBs. Once designed, upload your Gerbil files on the GLC PCB site. Get a full review of the PCB, select your desired settings and order the PCB for amazing prices. I've ordered 10 of my prototype PCBs for only $2 and received those in 6 days. Crazy right? So order your quality PCB and make your projects look a lot more professional. What's up my friends, welcome back! The first thing to do is to analyze the AC voltage. Here I've connected my oscilloscope to the mains input of my home. And as you can see we have a sine wave of 310 volts peak to peak or 220 volts RMS. The frequency is usually between 50 and 60 Hz. We have a positive part of the wave and a negative one, so there will be a zero crossing. So let's call this point zero degrees. So here we have 90 degrees, then 180, 270 and 0 degrees once again and repeating all over. That's how a sine wave is. Now using a component called triac, we will control the amount of time that this power is on and off. So let's see how the triacs work. First of all we all know diodes. Put just one diode to an AC signal and we've got ourselves a half wave rectifier. With just one diode, in this case, we will only have the positive part of the AC signal, since the diode won't let the negative part to pass. But now, what if we could activate or deactivate this diode? There is a component that could do that, and it's called a thyristor, which basically is a control diode that will be activated when the gate receives a current trigger, and continuing to conduct while the voltage across the device is not reversed. So here we have our AC signal. The negative part won't pass since we use a diode. But on the positive part, if we don't switch the thyristor, there won't be a positive part neither. So let's say that exactly in this moment we activate the gate of the thyristor with a pulse. Now we let the remaining part of the positive side of the AC wave. So now we have just half of the positive wave. So we have regulated the power. But if we want to do this on both positive and negative sides, we should use two thyristor in an anti-parallel configuration. One will control the positive side and the other one the negative. But there is already a component that does that and it's called a triac. This is its symbol and as you can see it's like we have two thyristors with one gate. The triac will remain deactivated till it receives a pulse to its gate. Once received, it will remain activated till the main input will change its polarity. So this is our main 220 volts AC wave. If we send a pulse to the triac gate in this moment, we will only let half of the wave pass, meaning half power, more or less. By changing the time when we send a pulse, we can change the amount of wave that will pass, and by that the amount of power. So here is what we are going to do. 
I will use this track to control AC voltage. So the first thing to do is to detect the zero cross, since the pulse that we will send needs to be in phase with the AC voltage. So we have to detect when the main AC voltage will pass from positive to negative or from negative to positive and synchronize our pulse with that, so it will fire always in the same spot. For that I will first use a full bridge rectifier. This will give me at the output both the positive and the negative curves of the AC wave and I do that since the Arduino can't work with negative values. So now, here on my oscilloscope, I have the input and the output from the full bridge rectifier. If you don't have a full bridge rectifier like this one, just use 4 diodes in this configuration. I will also add two 47 kilo ohms resistors to limit the current. Now I want to separate the high voltage side from the low voltage side, which in this case will be the Arduino microcontroller. For that I will use an optocoupler which in this case will be like a transistor with a gate activated by light and all of that inside of this IC. In this way there is no direct connection between the 220 volts high voltage and the 5 volts of the Arduino. Finally I add a pull down resistor as in this schematic, which by the way you could download from a link below. And now I connect the oscilloscope to the output. As expected I have some sort of trapezoidal wave with a peak to peak of 5 volts. Now I read that with the Arduino and I will create an interruption each time that I detect these low values. And that will be our zero cross. Since we've used the full bridge rectifier we will have the zero cross for both rising and falling parts of the AC wave. Now in order to control the gate of the triac we will use the diode AC switch or better called a DAC or DIAC. The DIAC is commonly used as a solid state triggering device for other semiconductor switching devices, mainly thyristors or triacs. The DIAC is a very useful device, which can be used to trigger triacs because of its negative resistance characteristics that allow it to switch on rapidly once a certain applied voltage level is reached. So, this will be our final schematic. We read the zero cross with the full bridge rectifier and the optocoupler. Then we create a firing pulse with the Arduino and we apply that pulse to an opto insulated diac through this resistor and an LED. I say opto insulated because once again this IC has a light control of the diode inside, so we separate the 5 volts from the Arduino and the 220 volts applied to the triac. Now I mount everything on a breadboard. Remember, in order to control power, all we have to do is to control the time between the zero cross and when we fire the pulse at the triac gate. For that, in the Arduino code I read the value of a potentiometer and map that value to a delay between 1 and 10 milliseconds. Why these values? Well, I know that my AC signal has a 15 Hz frequency, so the period will be in this case 20 milliseconds, so half period will be 10 milliseconds. So, just by that, using the potentiometer I can change the firing angle of my AC signal and by that I can control the time that the power is applied to this light bulb. So there you go, using the potentiometer I change the angle and by that the power. Easy right? So now all I've done, instead of using the potentiometer to change the delay, I will use my smartphone. I connect a Bluetooth module to the RX and TX pins of the Arduino, as in this final schematic. Now upload the new code that you will find below. Install this app that I've created in the App Inventor onto your smartphone. I connect to the Bluetooth module and now I can dim the light with my smartphone. Have in mind that not all devices will like this kind of power control, since there are a fraction of time that no power is applied to the device. Use this kind of AC power control with motors, dimmer switches for incandescent and light bulbs or as a soft starter. So there you go my friends, now you know how to use triacs and fire poles to control the amount of power. Use optocouplers and separate high voltage from low voltage. You have all the schematics, the app and the example codes below, so make sure you check that out. If my videos help you and you would like to help my projects, I have a Patreon campaign. The link is down below as always. 
I would really appreciate that guys. And by the way, thanks to all my Patreons. So I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial. If so, don't forget to click the like button like crazy and share this video with your friends. If you have any question about this video or any other, just leave it in the comment section below or on my Q&A page. Also, don't forget to subscribe and watch all of my other great tutorials. Remember, if you consider helping my projects, check my Patreon page as well. Thanks again and see you later guys.